This piece of wood was in my burn pile. Uh, I was cutting up pieces to burn in my fireplace. Uh, this is left over from the slabs I used to get the wood for my workbench or parts of my workbench. Uh, it was kind of rotted, uh, split uh, hickory and or pecan. It looked really nice on the workbench and I thought this piece looks actually pretty good. I'll try and save it. So I think I'll make a bench out of it. I'll only save the one live edge and I think I'll just cut it straight on this back side. Uh, but first I'm going to put it on the CNC and flatten it. So that, hopefully you can see it, that is right off the CNC. There's lots of curl, there's lots of figure. It's a good thing I didn't burn it. I've been staring at this piece of wood long enough and I was playing with my new scraper on it. That's another video. But I think I have a plan. Uh, what I'm gonna do is make a waterfall bench out of it. Uh, a waterfall bench on the one end, uh, and on this end, I will do some steel legs. Uh, so what I need to do is there's a big crack here. I need to fill that with some epoxy. And on the bottom side, uh, I need every inch of this. So I'm, I've got some bits here where the CNC table did not flatten it. So I'm going to get those flattened. So I think I will take it outside and cut off uh, this back side. This is going to be somewhat flat. I don't mind if the live edge is somewhat incorporated into it, but I think I'll just draw a line from these two corners and cut a line there. This, of course, I'm gonna leave as a live edge. So that's the plan. I put some tape on the back side where I think these cracks might go all the way through. And now I'm just gonna put a little silicone around the crack on this side just to act as a dam to hold the epoxy. I'll let this dry for a little bit and then I'll uh, put some epoxy in it. Uh, I used the Total Boat Epoxy. It's the bar top stuff. Uh, so it can only go in layers of about an eighth of an inch or so, which is fine for filling cracks. The advantage of that is that it dries fairly quickly. So it'll be fine tomorrow. Uh, and I also used uh, some black mica powder rather than a dye because I find that the powder doesn't stain the wood as badly as the uh, dye stain does. Glasses would help. The epoxy is cured. Now I need to scrape it down level with the wood again. When I'm using this scraper, I find that it does grab on the silicone. Uh, so it's kind of hard to scrape it down until all that silicone is gone. So I brought a little gasket scraper, and I'm going to try and get rid of that silicone first before I start using this scraper to knock down the epoxy. I'm here by table saw, and I need to just, uh, I need to, I want to, can I? I'm here at the table saw and I want to cut the ends nice and square to the, the edge where I cut off the live edge on the back side of the bench. So I've got my miter gauge set up with some scrap. I've got it clamped to the miter gauge. Uh, it just barely fits, so I'm going to have to start it and then raise the blade and then go through. I've been trying to decide which end to flip to a 90 degrees, and I think I'll do this side. I think the live edge has a better chance of lining up. The wood is pretty solid. Over here, I'd run into this little bit of rot, and I don't know how solid it's gonna be in there. I want the waterfall, or the vertical side, to be 18 inches tall. The piece of wood is two inches thick, I've got my blade at a 45 degree angle. So at the top of the blade, when it's two inches 
off the top of the table saw, I measured 19 inches to my fence. I've got my little stop block or a one, two, three block right there. So I will fasten my slab to my miter with the scrap on it. And once I hit that, I will go through the saw so that the slab is not riding alongside the fence. All right, well, I think that's gonna work out pretty well. Uh, a bit more epoxy work to do here. So I'm gonna use four inch strap to make the legs on this side. And they'll use a kind of a thicker material. I wanna kind of surround the piece of wood at the top and the bottom, and then we'll also continue down to the legs. Uh, so it's gonna kind of surround the slab but I also want it to be flush on the top. So I'm going to route down, I'll just use the CNC, uh, the, the thickness of the material that I'm gonna be using. This is the bottom of the vertical piece, so this would be against the floor. So I just want to put some epoxy in these cracks to help firm them up. On this end of the bench where the metal legs are going to be, I want the sides of the metal to be inset into the wood just like the top's going to be. So I put my square here on the outside of where the wood is and then I measured the distance or the thickness of my material and I've got a little square here and I just made a pencil mark and I've done that on both sides and I think the easiest way to do this is just to go back to the CNC and just run it back and forth here until I get to that line and then I will just clean it up with chisels and hand saws. I want this horizontal piece to cover the vertical pieces. So now that I have two flat sides, I measured this distance and added the thickness of the material. So it is 13 and a half here and 3 eighths, which should be 13 and 7 eighths. Uh, so I can cut my material now. I've got a couple temporary pieces just clamped here. I measure them, they're nice and straight. And I just wanna double check my measurement here. I'm gonna, this is the bottom of the piece and this is where the support is gonna be. So I have a piece that's gonna go across here and we are the same, 13 and a half. I've got my two pieces here where they're going to join and I got a straight piece of wood here and I'm just laying out where my dominoes are gonna go. So it's about every two inches. I've got some 45 degree angles cut on some pieces of plywood. I'm going to use CA glue and glue them to both sides of the joint to give me something to clamp to. One time, I thought I was gonna be really clever and I used the piece I cut out. 
and I just chopped that up and I put tape down and I used CA glue to glue it to the tape. Well, as soon as I put any pressure on it from the clamps, the tape gave way. And then it became a bit of a scramble because I was had glue going. Uh, so I just used CA glue and directly from the piece of wood onto the, the workpiece. And when it came time to knock it off, you know, they just say, oh, just use a hammer and knock it right off. Don't do that because a big chunk of the bench came up. And I ended up having to... Uh, I used epoxy and a little bit of uh, brass dust uh, to glue it on. It looked okay in the end, but uh, I'm using plywood now. So I can knock that last ply off and uh, just use sandpaper to sand it right down. Nope. I've got goats causing mischief. I'm back. I've got some tape here ready for the squeeze out. I'm gonna skip one of the dominoes because I misaligned one of the holes. All right, looks good. The metal for my legs is outside and it's soaking in vinegar. I'll leave it there till tomorrow. Uh, that will get rid of all the mill scale on it and it'll make it a lot easier to grind it and weld it. Now I prepped this material by soaking it in vinegar for 24 hours over the weekend and it works amazingly well. Uh, here's a cut off piece. You can see it's black and a little bit of rust on it with mill scale. And after 24 hours in vinegar, a wire brush just takes all that mill scale right off and you have nice clean metal ready for powder coating. I need glasses. I'm going to use my MIG machine to tack everything together and I'll probably finish it off with the TIG uh, so that I don't have a lot of grinding to do. I do get this question from friends that are interested in welding and they want to know which machine to get, TIG or a MIG. And it depends on what kind of work you're going to do. I have both. Uh, the MIG stands for metal inert gas. And you're basically, you're adding material to whatever you're welding. There's a wire that comes out through the center of the uh, torch. And that's what makes the arc. And it adds material to whatever you're welding. The tungsten inert gas or TIG has a piece of tungsten. It doesn't melt. So you have to add filler mater material and you can add a little or you can add a lot depending on what kind of joint that you're doing. I'm doing the outside of this table leg right now. I don't want it a lot of material there because I want it to be smooth. So I'm going to use my TIG for that and I'm just going to melt the two pieces together but I'm going to add a very little bit of filler rod just so I get a slight crown and I can grind, grind that nice and smooth because I want it to be flat. So if you're doing something that you don't want to see any seam, you want to use a TIG welder. If you're doing like an inside corner where you don't really care, or you're just slapping a couple of pieces of metal together, then maybe a MIGS for you. Uh, I use both. They both have their uses. Uh, and they do have multi-use machines. I happen to have two different machines. Uh, I bought them at different times. Anywho, let's, uh, enough chit chat. Let's get welding. So I got a little bit of messing around going on. I took it outside and I sanded the side so it wasn't such a tight fit. This is my main support piece here. The top side is pretty much just decorative. I've got some holes drilled in here. I'm gonna transfer that into the piece so I can do my inserts later. I've got a couple pieces of thick cardstock on the side here because this piece has a little bow in it. So when I clamp down in the center, it really puts pressure on the outside here. Uh, so I, I want that just to have a little bit of a space.
Well, that's it. It looks pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to take it outside and take my die grinder and take some of the hard edges off. It's all cleaned up. It fits very nicely. I'm just going to use my center punch now to transfer these holes into the bench. And then I can take this for powder coating and I can sand this bench this afternoon. There you go. It's all done. It looks very nice. The live edge is nice on this side. The figure on the top and it meets up nicely with the waterfall edge. I ended up using Danish oil. There's a couple reasons why I wanted to use an oil finish. One, it would soak in and harden up some of the wood that was a little soft on the vertical part here just uh, because Again, this is a spalted piece, and spalting is kind of right on the edge of rotting away. It would also bring out this curl that's in the, the lighter colored part of the wood. It really darkened up this part, uh, but it looks okay. I wanted, I've always wanted to put a piece of metal on the top, and it's just a little proud of the bench, but it's pretty good. I've always liked that look. Uh, what I'm not so sure about is how thin these legs are. They're plenty strong. That's not the concern. It's more of a look than anything else. Anywho, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.